When I go camping, I want the most simple setup as possible. All I need is 12 volts and USB ports, and I want something that attaches directly to the battery. Now in the past, I had been using this Redodo DC distribution box. Now initially, this was kind of overpriced for what it was. It is compact and it has a bunch of different connections on it, but it doesn't have 100 watt USB-C and the voltmeter is a little bit off by about two tenths of a volt or more. I was kind of looking for something better. So for a fun DIY project, I wanted to put together my own DC box. So let me show you what it is. So here's a closer look at the DC box. For the power input on the bottom, I have an Anderson SB50 connection. All you need is a pigtail from a battery and plug it in and it powers it up. Now at the top here, I have a voltmeter and USB ports. The top USB port is rated at 18 watts. And then I have two 36 watt power delivery ports. And this does have a switch, so you can turn this off when not in use. But what I like is that the cover here has a hole in it or a thinner layer of plastic so you can see the actual volts through the lid. So you can turn it on and off by pushing right there. Now for charging and discharging the battery, so powering my fridge, my shower, things like that, I have these 12 volt connections. So these are Anderson power pole ports. Now these ones are rated for 20 amps each because I wired them with 12 gauge wire. And these ones right here are rated for 30 amps each because I wired them with 10 gauge wire. And of course I do have a 12 volt socket if I need. Now what's cool with that is I do have this 100 watt USB-C power delivery uh, insert. So I plug that in there and then I get my 100 watt USB-C port. Now wiring this up to your battery is super simple. You just take a little pigtail like this, it has a positive and negative, stick that into the SB50 connection. And then on the back of this, I have Velcro and on the battery itself, there's Velcro. And so you just basically stick that on there and attach the two leads and you have your power box. Now for the wiring, I'm using six gauge flexible wire, just connects to the negative, the positive, you tighten them down with a wrench and then you put on these two covers to protect the terminals and you're good to go. Now, of course you can connect up this DC box to any 12 volt source, whether that be in your boat, in the back of your truck or even to standalone batteries like this. But I will say lithium iron phosphate batteries have evolved in the last few years. For example, right here, I have a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It has 1280 watt hours of capacity and this is a group size 31. They do make them a little bit smaller, but you can see it's a little bit bulky because they have a bunch of open air space on the inside of this. They basically just threw this in a battery case with a ton of extra space around the battery. Now this is a 300 amp hour mini battery from Dr. Prepare that I've been testing. Now this has three times the capacity as that battery, which is a little over 3,800 watt hours. Now I like to use a battery like this for a few different reasons. First off, the battery prices over the last couple of years have significantly dropped. So you can pick up this battery for around $350. Also, I love that the terminals on the top are next to each other, so it's just much easier to mount a DC box like this. And the fact that because this has three times the capacity, but it's only just a little bit bigger, that is why I love these. There's so much capacity in this that I can go on a week-long camping trip, powering my 12-volt fridge, my Starlink Mini, my 12-volt shower, charging a bunch of mobile devices, and I don't even have to think about charging this. I can just throw a small solar panel on this and a charge controller and just let it trickle charge throughout the day versus the other battery. I definitely had to micromanage it and move the solar panel around a little bit more and try to get that in the sun so I could keep that battery charged. With this one here, this will go easily without having to focus on charging it. Now this video is not about this particular battery. I will have a dedicated review for this in the future but I just wanted to highlight some of the advantages for a large capacity mini form factor battery. This video is all about this DC box. Now, in a minute here, I will be going through a full build on this, a step-by-step -step build. I will also have all the parts that I use in the video description down below. But for anybody that's not a DIYer, I did find a few other options on Amazon that you might find interesting. For example, I found one that is a little bit more expensive, but it did have this nice screen that shows the actual wattage output, and the voltage, and a few other things. It had a bunch of USB options and DC connections, so I'll include the link to that down in the video description. I also found a middle of the line option that was just a little bit more basic, and I found a really cheap one with 
12 volt sockets and USB ports. So if you're looking for something that's off the shelf, I will include the links to those down in the video description as well. Now the first part of this project, I wanted to have a clean surface to put some bus bars. So there's actually a bunch of plastic standoffs that are molded in the bottom of the case. So I took a Sharpie, marked each one, and then I took a rotary tool with a cutoff wheel and just removed each one of those. It didn't take very long, and this is what it looked like once those were all removed. Now moving on to the next step, for the power input, I wanted to use one of these flush mount Anderson SB50 connections. Now in order to have this go into the box, you have to have a hole that's four centimeters wide by two centimeters tall. Now to cut that out, I used the rotary cutoff wheel again. I just carefully cut along the lines. And then once you kind of score the plastic deep enough, you can actually just punch it out. And then the SB50 just pops right in and it gives it a really clean look. Now moving on to the next step, I used this 3M VHB tape, actually two layers of this stuck to the bottom of the fuse block and the DC bus bar to hold them in place on the bottom. And that's why we removed the plastic standoff so they'd have a flush place to mount. And I just love how well these fit inside this case. Well, now that everything was mounted on the inside of the case, I wanted to move to the front panel. So I laid out everything how I wanted it. So I wanted two Anderson connections on the left-hand side and then the USB ports and the 12 volt socket on the right-hand side. Now the actual measurement, uh, so measuring from the top down, the first row is about six centimeters and the second row was about 12 centimeters. And I kind of wanted to offset it a little bit to the right. So marking eight centimeters over and then five centimeters over. Now this was just personal preference. You could do whatever you want here, but this kind of ended up working well with the fuse block. Now, once you've marked out the holes on the front panel, it's time to drill them out. Now, I like to use these Daredevil spade bits from Bosch. There's a bunch of different sizes, and these are quite sharp, so they cut really nicely. For the Anderson inserts, you're going to want to use a one-inch spade bit. And then for the larger 12-volt socket and USB insert, you're going to want to use a one and one-eighth inch spade bit. So it's a step up from that one. Basically, you just take a drill, hold on to the box, wear some gloves. It makes quite a bit of a mess but it does end up cutting a pretty decent hole. It doesn't take much work at all. And then you can just insert each one of these into those holes and it looks fairly nice. Now, if you flop it around in the back, you can see the 12 volt socket and USB ports both screw on with this uh, kind of this backer that screws on the back. But when it comes to the Anderson, you will have to drill out um, each one of those holes and then you'll just find some screws that screw into each one of those to mount them in place. Now moving on to the next step of the project, we actually want to set up our wires going to the positive fuse block and the DC bus bar. So basically we have our SB50 connection here and you can see we have the positive coming into here with the ring terminal and the negative coming into here to this point. Now because SB50s are rated for 50 amps, I opted to use six gauge wire. Now if you haven't set these up, they're fairly simple. Basically you strip back the wire and then you get these terminals that come with the flush mount kit. You put those on the end of the wire and then you basically crimp them on with one of these Anderson crimpers. And I just put them in this 50 amp mark right here and it crimps them up. Now, once they're in there, they just snap into place over a little pin. And you can actually see both of these here. There is a pin that holds them in place. So now we have the wires going to the positive fuse block and the DC bus bar. So now we can wire up these. Now the wiring for each one of these is fairly simple. They each have a positive and negative connection. For example, you have these two terminals on each one of these. Now the 12 volt socket and the USB ports, they do come with their own wiring kits. You can use those, but in order to avoid voltage drop on the voltmeter and to be able to pull a little bit more power through the 12 volt socket, I am planning to use 12 gauge wire. So uh, a limit of 20 amps for each one of these. Now for the Anderson power pole, it's really easy as well. You just set up your Anderson pairs and you push them in and then there is a screw that locks them into place. That's how these work here. So let's just start with the wiring and we'll go through each step. Okay, so I just finished the wiring setup for the USB ports and the 12 volt socket. Once again, you can use the stock wiring if you'd like, but I've opted to go with 12 gauge wires. So I have two positive wires here each one has a 20 amp fuse, so they just click right into each one of these. So you have a positive and negative going to each one of these. I've cut the length 
Uh, so it's basically long enough to connect to both those right here. Now you have to balance the length because there's not much room in this box. So the wires can't be too long, but they also can't be too short so that you can't access the front panel. So with these two done, now we just have to do the wiring for the Anderson power pole connections. Okay, so I've just finished setting up my first pair of Anderson power pole connections. These are designed for 20 amps. I'm using 12 gauge wire. I've added two positive wires. So these two here with 20 amp fuses, and then I've added two negative wires. So these two right here coming off the bus bar. Now, because I don't have much space here, I'm using a larger ring terminal, and I have both those going in to one crimped connection just to save on space. Now you wanna orient these a specific way so that you don't have any um, chance of connecting them in the reverse polarity. So I like to wire them like this. Now remember, these are just gonna slide straight up into this here, and then there's gonna be a screw that goes in place to hold them in place. Now I do have a whole video on wiring up these Anderson power pole connections. I'll include that down in the video description if you wanna learn more, but I'm not gonna duplicate that here. So it's nice to have two 20 amp connections to your battery. Okay, so I've finished the final Anderson power pole connections. Now what I wanted to do with these is I wanted to have 30 amp connections. So I am using 10 gauge wire and 30 amp fuses. It's basically the same exact setup, except for I decided to use the heavier gauge wire. So I have two positives coming to these here and the two negatives. You just have to cut them the proper length and then you can see also the same orientation there. So these will go about right here and plug into the other Anderson power pole connection over here with the screw that holds it in place. So I don't know if you'd fit much more wire in here. Um, it is organized, but it's very tight. I'll show you guys, I'll basically go ahead and assemble this together and uh, you can see it is fairly tight with all this wiring. I just wanted to show you how simple it is for the 12 volt socket and the USB ports. So just the positive and negative terminals connect to the actual labeled positive and negative. Now I found to kind of get this to fit a little bit better, I just do a simple twist here. So I'm gonna do a 360 degree twist, okay? And then these wires down here are actually gonna lay down. See how they lay down better? It's gonna be really hard to see that, but they lay down right there. And then now all I need to do is pop these up through here and then put the screw through. So these will just go up through here and then I should be able to close the lid. Now I flipped the box on the side so you guys can see kind of where this screw goes in to lock these in place. And so once you have them aligned, it kind of pushes in most of the way. And then you just have to use a 1.5 Allen key to just finish screwing it in. So it's just tedious, but it locks them in place and it does work pretty well. So we'll just get this screwed in and then I'll do the other one and then we should be locked in place on these Anderson ports. Okay, so I've just finished installing both the Anderson power pole ports. This is what they look like. So right here we have two 30 amp connections and then right here we have two 20 amp connections. You have the 12 volt socket and then the voltmeter and USB ports. So with the wiring completed, all we have to do is kind of just tuck it in place. So this just kind of presses down. There's just a little bit of pressure, but there are four different screws that hold down the top. So now I just need to put in those screws and we'll be good to go. So with everything assembled, now it's time to power it up. So I have this pigtail just going off a battery over here. So let's see what happens. Look at that, 13.6 volts. That means this is powered on. Same with these three USB ports. I like that it you can see the voltage through this, but then there's a power button. So you can turn that off if you don't want to waste that background power. But the Anderson power poles and the 12 volt socket are always powered on. Ah, oh, that's awesome. So with the DC box finished, I briefly want to test each of the USB ports. So the first USB-C port, I'm seeing power delivery 3.0 at 36 watts. We are charging this power bank at 35 watts. Now it looks like the second power delivery port is configured the same. We are also seeing 36 watts. Now the last USB-A port is quick charge 2.0 protocol at 12 volts, and we are seeing 18 watts into the power bank. Now because we're using an SB50 connection and six gauge wire, I'd say that you're probably good for 60 amps continuous through all of these ports. Now, obviously all of these are protected with their own fuses, but you just wanna make sure that your total power that you're either pulling from the battery or pushing back to the battery through charging doesn't go over 60 amps because you don't want to overheat the wires here. Anything that's a bigger load than that, you'll want to connect directly to the battery terminals to either charge or discharge the battery. 
Now guys, as I'm finishing up this video, thank you for sticking around to the end. Now, I know there are so many different ways to build a DC box like this, and I'm interested to see what type of project you guys have worked on. If you end up building something like this, or you already have something, reach out to me on Instagram, send me a message, send me a couple photos. I'd love to see your creativity on what you end up doing putting a box together like this. As always, thank you so much for watching the video. If you guys liked the video, please smash the thumbs up button, and I'll definitely recommend a couple other videos you can check out. Until next time, we'll see you guys later.